hack defeat uh, to Cray Wonders on the final day of the season. It just felt a bit like the players who've been playing out of position for the last few weeks because of yeah. injuries had, had run out of legs a bit, wasn't it? Run out of legs. The injuries obviously hampered us, but we can't give away the goals that we've conceded. And they're from restarts. It's not open play. We give away four, I think five, including the penalty from restarts, which is a corner, free kick or a front and a penalty. But, you know, it's, it's been a long season. We, we, we played some good stuff in the middle third. We were like 22 games unbeaten. It was the start and the back end of it that really hampered us. I think the injuries and it took its toll at the end. Obviously, um, we'll, we'll touch on the crowd first and foremost. You know, we, people say we had nothing to play for today but pride, and yet we still had a set out crowd and we sold out by Monday. Well, I've been Ridiculous. Fortunate enough, very, very lucky during my career as a footballer, um, and during my career, my journey as a coach, assistant, as a manager, to work for some really fantastic football clubs. I think Barnum and Wolves is the best club I've worked for. Even the support, I think the support's even more amazing here because. <clears throat> you know, it's probably, I think, the sixth best supported team up and down the country in the pyramid, on the pyramid. And it's very similar to Luton, you know. Luton had dark days, they had great people behind the club, and they saved them, and it's no different to this club. The people of this football club, and I keep going on about it behind the scenes, that no one gets to see, of all the hard work they have, the club's in safe hands. Amazing chairman, unbelievable chairman, you know, works due diligently hard for the football club. You know, the people that run the club, the general manager of Mel, you know, Gabby, the groundsman, you know, Liam Hickey, who, who saved the club initially, Joe, the secretary, you yourself. Oh, thanks. <laughs> these others, the same many more, Scully, they all work so tiredly hard for the club. And the message that I've got to the supporters is that the club's in safe hands. Unbelievable group of people. Great chairman. You know, we, we've got to make sure now, the next season, that we do a lot better than what we did this season. But, you know, sometimes when you get the new squad, and I talk about this all the time, I bought the 25, 2016 players. It took a long time to get us to where we wanted to be. And the run, you know, 23 on game, you know, games on being was, was excellent. And obviously the injuries hampered us and we lost our way a little bit at the back end of the season. Yeah. But my, my message to the supporters that they are amazing. My message to the supporters is this, this club, without them, is not the club it would be. You know, even to the death, they're still here supporting their team, and thousands, and long may that continue. A you know, great, great place to be. You know, and sometimes you go to a place of work. I, I love coming here, smile on my face. And it's not not all the time that you find that, but the people here, that people don't really get to see behind the scenes that work really hard. Claire in the boardroom, you know, the chairman's wife, everybody, everybody, all hands on decks, pushing in the right direction. And they don't need to trip you up, they, they're doing whatever they can to help. So, message one, the club's in great hands. Message two, you know, we're going to go again and do better. If you look 12 months ago, you know, relegation, the club seemed disjointed, ununified, and now 12 months later, despite a disappointed talent finish of the season, yeah. the club seems as together yeah, as it's, it's ever funny, been. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, it's hard to explain or tell people, you've got to work here to know what you're dealing with, um, and I'm privileged to be here. Mm. Uh, yeah, 12 months ago it was doom and gloom, when we, we set out to rebuild. We, you know, we want to build a club from the bottom up. That was one of my tasks. Unity within everybody, and I've tried to do that with the squad, with a different squad mm. of players, and we've got a group working tirelessly hard, showing the supporters that we care. That's very important to me. You know, I don't have to play at the supporters' notes today. That was very, very disappointed at the end of the, end of the game today. Um, and that's also the connection between me, the players, the supporters are vitally important, but also the connection between me and the people, because I'm an employee, like all the rest of the guys that work here, that has to be solid as well. And I can't have asked to work for better, so better people, or work with better people than I am now. But the support is the, the cherry on the top, isn't it? They're amazing. Amazing. 
we've had hundreds turn up, hundreds turn up when we've been away, away games, and we've had thousands turn up when we've been at home, win, win, win lose, or draw. They've been absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Bloody scholarly. <laughs> um, back to today and a personal level, Kaya scoring your son. How pleased are you for well, first year as a father, but second year as a manager because well, he's had to deal with quite a bit. He asked me a question and I answered it the best way I could. Am I being tough on him because he's my son? And the answer was probably yes, he's still got a lot of learning to do. You know, the staff are desperate for me to get him involved more, but we'll probably see more of him next season. He's got an important season ahead of him next season. He's a good player. He's a good player, but like a father, you've got to do the right thing. And the problem is here, I'm employed by the club to do the best for the club, not, not for my son. Um, his time will come, and he's proven that today. Finally then, obviously Kaya replaced Rico. Last ever game in football, a career of over 20 years. Just sum up Mark Ricketts from the last 12 months you've got to work with him and, and the kind of person he is. He's an absolute gentleman. He's a born leader, a winner. And I think it was the right time for him to call it a day. We brought him to the club for his leadership qualities, and he's done that on and off the field for us as much as he can. Yeah, but when you get to a certain age, your body tells you certain <laughs> things, doesn't it? Yeah. And I think it was the right time for him. I'll sit down and talk to him about the future. We'll see what we can do. Maybe he can be involved in some capacity. But truly, truly proud to be the manager of his last game. You know, I gave him a hug. I did that with uh, a player not, 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 not so long ago. But <laughs> Rico's more, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's been an absolute uncut diamond for every team that he's played for and he never gives anyone any hassle. He tries to do things the right way. And it was a pleasure, like I said, to be his last manager. And I know that Boreham would hold him in high esteem, so you know, they named the bar after him over there as well because well, he, he, that's, that's what people think of him. And hopefully, you know, we'll see him around the place. Pervet hat, that's jaws are closed to 23-24 and the next time we'll catch up, it'll be pre-season, probably.